You, cool. you know how I'm going to start this video? Uh, <laughs> the MCAT is hard and the MCAT is important. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually going to record that intro and put it at the beginning of this. Okay, sounds good. All right, everybody, this is part two of my MCAT tips with MCAT Bros. If you guys haven't checked out my first video, you guys can click on the link above. But in this one, we're going to cover an MCAT sample schedule. This was a non traditional student. He felt a little bit weaker in biochemistry. And then we go over a study tracker log and a car's logbook. And I know it's kind of long to listen to the full explanation of the schedule, but I think it's important for you guys. I wish it was something that I had had. So here we go. I hope you guys like it. This is one of our students. He was non-traditional. Oh yeah, that's like the other thing you gotta watch out for. Like, has it been a long time since your prereqs? Or has mm -hmm. it been like, have you taken them pretty recently? Did you get C's in them or did you get like A's? You know, um, do you yeah. feel confident or did you basically, um, you know, was your teacher super easy where you didn't learn it? <laughs> uh, um, have, or maybe you haven't taken the prereq and, you know, you can study for the MCAT without that, but you got to be mindful and give yourself more time. So this was a student, I think he had taken like all the prereqs. Um, so he was, he was pretty solid. Um, so he was weakest in biochem and biochem is a pretty important topic. Yeah, um, it was. People think, uh, people think it, it does sort of build on chemistry and biology. So some people think you shouldn't do it first. And, you know, I could agree with that in some senses. But, you know, student had recently taken his prereqs, okay? So it wasn't a huge deal. Like, he yeah. had the foundation to just start. Uh, but um, if the student didn't have the foundation in any of it um, and was weaker, you would start with chemistry or biology first. You can do physics whenever you want. Um, but, uh, and biochemistry and orgo should happen after you do chemistry and biology. Typically. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so it's pretty typical. So, you know, you could do bio and chemistry, then maybe ochem, then biochem. Physics can happen whenever, and psych can happen whenever. Um, some people like to do a little bit of psych every day, like five pages uh, of the 300 page notes, or, you know, like five pages of their content review book rather than all at the end, because all memorization. And it's easier to memorize little chunks at a time. So, and it's like, it's like a nice fun way to end your day. So yeah. some people like to do- <laughs> It's lighter like do, on the brain. Yeah, it's a, a little bit lighter on the brain. So like some people like to just spread that out over time, just like their cars. So you could do that on the side. So like literally this guy, he, you know, we figured, hey, we should just stick with the chapters, you know, um, just in order and give him a break day on Sunday. So he can catch up, he can review the whole previous week. So he can go through chapter one, two, and three. He can add in practice questions, those chapters, if he feels like it. He can mm -hmm. start doing Inky on those cards. He can you know, maybe make summary sheets, he can review those. So he has some time to help things solidify or just catch up, you know, because um, he might fall behind. He's just human after all. So we did the same thing. Um, and then we just went through this, like, you know, this guy's just doing an order. And you see his like actual progression. It's actually different. He skipped and needed to catch up chapter nine. So don't be, you know, don't be afraid. And like, but then he finished it up on, you know, 715. You know, your schedule was never gonna, no matter who makes it, it's never gonna be 100%. You know, yeah, that's, exactly. not, that's just not how life is. Like, so, um, and look at this. You can always add in a few practice questions from Khan Academy if you need. Like, if you wanna start doing questions, get used to them. Um, the MCAT style and Khan Academy, guess what guys, it's free forever. You don't need a subscription. You don't have to be paying for it. You know, you could just like pop it open, um, get some practice questions in anytime. Um, and you can sort of see what the MCAT's like and they have practice passages. So you could definitely do that. And we have actually a document like tells you which order to do them in mm -hmm. uh, that, that corresponds to uh, the way the Kaplan chapters or any other chapter is because right now they're kind of jumbled so yeah. we don't have them in order of like oh this this relates to amino acids this relates to dna this really relates to rna so awesome. you could do practice passages that correspond to your chapter where do you so, do you have that document free for everybody or is yeah it's free yeah yeah honestly everything we do is honestly free for everybody mm -hmm. the the only thing that is sort of paid for us is like if you need individual attention and mm -hmm. you like you know, um, that's like the only thing. But if it's if we made it once, it's free for everybody. Okay. And same thing with Khan Academy. We have like pretty much all the notes available for all the videos for free. So I'm gonna try and put all those like in the links of this right? video. That way yeah. a lot of people can can reach them. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. 
um, and that will help. And so this guy also has like TPR passages. So like I said, mm -hmm. hey, do some of those, um, you know, some extra practice if you feel like it, but you don't need to do it. It's not absolutely essential. We need to get you through the content right now. So I'm not going to make it an assignment yeah. um, right away. So boom. And then like he had like, I think he had midterm something right oh, or like a summer class or like a camp just literally block it off man like you're not gonna you're yeah. not gonna be able to do anything <laughs> you're not gonna get anything done yeah so and, and you're just gonna like, fall behind and feel worse <laughs> you're gonna fall behind so just block it off yeah um, and this is honestly just a random one and look at this he was literally falling behind because i guess he was weak in chem and you know he fell behind a chapter and he just noted it down and that's okay and you know by the next break day you'll catch up eventually nice so and he's like, you know, he fell behind, yeah, one chapter, one chapter, and he just stayed a chapter behind for a while. And that's okay. Not, not a huge deal. Um, and he just did day by day, right? He didn't say, oh, my ch I'm a chapter behind, like, let me try to do two. And like, yeah. let me just freak myself out some more. And then I get nothing <laughs> done, right? And I've experienced that myself. I tried to do too much because I didn't do anything the last day and I got nothing done. I know. So you just do it day by day. So make sure you go day by day. And uh, if you fall like two weeks behind, don't just be like, I'm going to somehow cram all this in. I'm going <laughs> to somehow magically find a way to cram yeah, it. Yeah, you're no. just not going to learn any of this. It's just going to be gone. None of it's going to be learned. So just, just move your day. You know, you just find a way to make it feasible goals that, where you're happy. Um, and then boom. So he's still behind, you know, one chapter. So he's doing physics all the way through. Um, then he's doing OCHEM. And then he's doing the 300 page notes, which is, yeah. you know, pretty popular psych document that I typed up in my own studying that just goes with the Khan Academy videos. And yeah, I saw it whenever, I saw it in one of our previous videos that I put it in the description. Yeah, it's really, it's really, people really like it. You know, um, I'm not just saying that, that's what people say. Uh, so, um, <laughs> and, um, you know, it's, it's, so this guy, you know, I give him a lot of time, like, you know, two, three weeks, you know, and he's doing, he's giving, he had a solid two to three weeks mm -hmm. for each subject, which is really solid, you know, and he had a good time studying. Like, it wasn't a stressful experience for him because he studied for the MCAT for like four hours a day and then he went on his day, you know, so that, that was his, what he needed to do. He didn't have all day to study. He just had four hours. So that's smart. He had, he had 14 weeks of content review though. So that's, more than three months, you know, actually 15 weeks, close to four months of content review. Yeah. So this guy, he needed a lot of time because he's only studying four hours a day. And you might think, oh, that's a waste of time. But like he had the time, you know? So if he didn't have the time, maybe we could have said, let's try to do this in two months, right? Let's try to get him in high gear and try to get through these books. Um, some people say four months is too much, you know, but I really made sure he knew the material because I said, hey, let's do some Anki cards let's do some practice questions when you have extra time. You got to get through the material. We can't just say, let's skip it. Um, and that's the way it fit. That's just the reality. That's just how it fit for him. And no. we could, we there's so many it. students are just want to rush everything. And at the end of the day, it just hurts you instead of helping you. And it, yeah. Yeah. And that's exactly it. And it, it just sucks to see. It's like a lot of students, even ours, they, they say, Hey, I want to like, it's, it's March right now. They're like, I want to apply this cycle. And I get it. I get it, man. Um, and or like they graduate, <laughs> and they want yeah. to apply this cycle, and I try. I try, and you know, and I say, hey, maybe can we consider next cycle, right? And we can really make this MCAT strong. They say, no, no, no. I want to apply the cycle. So I say, okay, um, uh, let's let's see what we can do, right? Um, yeah. let's maybe your hours, make those higher. Um, but those students are the most likely to fall behind, to be honest. And they they dislike their MCAT, they dislike their studying a lot. And it's because they're trying to do too much. You yeah. know, like we said, just the content review alone with Khan Academy is 150 hours of video. And if you really internalize that, even if you're watching at double speed, it's gonna take you 200 hours, right? Um, assuming you've done your prereqs. And then it's 150 hours for the AMC materials. Uh, so it's going to be 300, 400 hours of studying for most people, um, ideally, at minimum, um, just to do those two things. So if you don't have that kind of time, and that's without your phone, if you don't have that kind of time, it's it's going to be a tough battle, you know, where you're racing against the clock and the MCAT becomes overwhelming. It just becomes very stressful. Very stressful. And I find that with courses too. It's like, 
they join this course to keep them accountable, <laughs> but the course is asking them to do three or four chapters a day. Yeah, it's they're too fast paced and it's just it's just yeah, too fast paced. It's confidence, and, really. And it messes it really messes with your confidence and it, it makes you feel like you're not good enough, but you are. You're just you're not giving yourself the proper leeway to yeah. succeed. Um, and if you say, hey, I want to apply the cycle, you gotta see like what can give. <laughs> can my work give? Can my volunteer activities give? Can can something give? You yeah, can't just something has to give for sure. Something has to give, and if nothing can nothing can give, that's okay too. Okay, that's okay too. But you gotta spread out your studying over six months, eight months, ten months, you know, or just be really smart, you know. And if you're really smart, you know, that's a different. You probably aren't watching this video, like you know, <laughs> if you're like if your your practice test is five ten right off the bat, and there literally are people like that. Like they start, I had one student start at a 508. Start at a 508. Like, that's insane. nuts. That's not the norm though, you know? I had a classmate, whenever I took it the first time, he started at a 500, which I was like, dang, that's high. Because the yeah. very first time I took it, I, think I started like at 492. So mm -hmm. I was like, wow, I felt way behind compared to him. But he was just a really smart guy. And yeah. I don't know, it's hard not to compare yourself with other people whenever you're, you're studying, especially in a group. Oh, for sure, yeah. Um, but honestly, some of our students, they're starting at 474. That's the lowest I've worked with. And they get up, they get up there, man. Like yeah. um, they, they because like we really emphasize that 30 hours per one point improvement. And some of those people are like, I want a 520. So we say, let's, let's shoot for it, right? But it's, <laughs> gonna, it's, gonna, be a, it's gonna be a while, it's gonna be a grind. Yeah. Um, so um, it's, you're not gonna be someone who's studying 18 days. You know, you're gonna be someone who's studying, you know, six months, yeah. 10 months, you know, um, depending on your situation. And we have had great success with students studying six to eight months, great success. So if someone can plan for it and they're, they, they think they're a little bit weaker, Absolutely. If you're a stronger student, like your friend, you know, he could take it in maybe two months, you know, two to three months and he'll be killing it. Um, so what I find is most of the time students who start at 500, they can easily hit 512 to 515 in within two months, within two to three months. Um, a student starting at 480, he needs more time. Like with three months, maybe he hits 500, but yeah. it's going to be tough. And 490 is like the mid range where it's like, you know, three months could probably get you up to a 505 to 510 if you work really, really hard, you know, but you got to be really active with your studying. You got to do the Anki, you got to do the practice question, got to really reinforce, like, why did I get it wrong? Yeah. Why is the right answer right? How do I analyze this passage? <laughs> How do I make myself interested in this and go from there? So this, this student, he had a pretty flexible budget and he used UWorld, which is um, a question bank of 2000 questions. And I find students usually take two months to complete this. Yeah. So that's pretty much how much time I gave him. Uh, so he's doing 80 questions a day, which is quite a lot. But you got to remember, he's doing 80 questions a day, but he has a really strong content foundation for yeah. four months. So if you don't have that strong foundation and you're just doing questions, maybe 20 a day or 30 a day or 40 a day is more appropriate. So you have to just really evaluate what's best for you. Um, the MCAT test is a minute and a half per question. But you gotta understand reviewing it, as we know with med school, it takes like even longer, <laughs> five or six minutes. Uh, it takes forever to review. Yeah, reviewing takes three at like two, three times, three times longer minimum. Yeah. Minimum, yeah, exactly. And if and you then really you come back know, and look at it again later, and yeah, it's just it takes a lot of time. So you know, uh, but he had, I think he had more time at this time, and we we gave him, you know, just straight up U world um, for like you know a few months. Um, and then he's doing a, a practice test, right? And he's reviewing it. And some people, um, I, I would agree with this, some people who are learning with just practice tests and focusing their learning efforts on practice tests and they did a shorter content review or virtually none, um, they take two to three days to review a test, not one. And I think it's very tempting to say, I'm gonna take half a day, one day, but like we said, it takes three times longer to review, right? So you need to give yourself two to three days to review a test. Um, yeah. So I only gave him a day, but that doesn't mean he only took a day. That's just like what I felt was right for the schedule. He could have always finished review in the, in the next two days. Yeah, I remember I would 
give myself one day to review and looking back, I wish I would have taken longer just reviewing those tests. Probably, yeah. probably two days would have been good. Two um, days is usually pretty solid. Um, yeah, but, but I was this, doing, I was reviewing too fast. Too think. fast. And you don't, you don't, you know, like people say like, you took 12 tests, right, Aaron? Uh, yeah. So you could have, you could have taken seven and spent I that know. extra day. And that extra day and you probably could have done better. And that's why I say like a lot of students are like, hey, I want to do 10 tests before my test and I want to do 20 tests, I want to do 12 tests, I want to do 15, I want to do this and that. And I'm just like, where's the time? Like, where's the time uh, to, we got to do a content review, we got to do this, we got to make sure you review your tests. So what happens is we, a lot of our students end up doing less tests than they had hoped for. And that's okay, you don't need a lot of tests. Like you can, you just need to review them right, you know? You just don't need a lot. Yeah, I was feeling really burnt out, just doing one week after, like I was doing on Saturday, reviewing Sunday, content review the rest of the week, doing another one Saturday. It yeah. was just, it was getting, it was definitely burn, burning me out when I was. Oh, 100%. So I one a week's great, uh, but like like I said, if you try to do a lot more of your content review at this, the front end, mm -hmm. then you have more confidence on your tests and you have less less effort in reviewing. And you know that, and you're just doing straight questions and reinforcing and doing Inky on the side. So he's doing New World still. Um, he's doing Next Step. You know, he did some Next Step tests just because they're cheaper. Like you know, if you go to like some websites, they're like three hundred dollars for four tests, and yeah. others are like a hundred. So, um, and some people I say don't do any third-party tests. You can just do AMC. So when Aaron and I, when I took the test, there's only two. When Aaron took the test, there's three. Mm -hmm. um, but now there's five AMC exams, so that can keep you pretty busy. And if you do the free tests that come with your books, and you do the free tests from different companies, I have a list of five. You can keep you busy for a really long yeah, time. Yeah, you can just yeah. You can just do there's, free tests. There's you can no reason to spend crazy amounts of money on the test you honestly could literally, yeah with five amc tests nowadays like mm -hmm. back in the day it was different with five amc tests that's a lot and all the free exams that are available you could be busy for three four months on just free tests so um that's what i suggest um, to a lot of students um and if they want to buy them i really i think spending more than 100 bucks on tests is too much like just 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 limit it's not about how much money you spend like yeah Obviously, if you have $0, it's going to, it's going to suck. Like, um, you know, it's about how much time you put in. It, it really is. It's not about the tutor you hire. It's not about, you know, what resource that you use that is really highly reviewed. It's about just learning the AMC content outline, being able to apply it to AMC uh, questions and reviewing it properly and seeing, oh, this is missing in my knowledge base. How do I fill it in? Um, how do I make sure I remember this and moving on from there? And then reevaluating with another test, and there's really like honestly nothing else. And holding yourself accountable and discipline, and you'll be good. And so like this 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 guy keeps going. So he did the four next step tests, and then he had the Calvin book. So he's doing the free tests, three tests from the Calvin books. Mm -hmm. Even if you buy them used, you can get the the, the tests for free still. So and he's sort of redoing some of the U world questions that he had missed um got wrong and he's doing them again and i think that's a good strategy as well a lot of students are like oh i reviewed it just fine and i'm like did you really wait so let and i challenge them this is one of my challenges it's a month after you took a test your first test do that test again and if you didn't get a 528 yeah, i think wrong. that's really good advice i wish i would have redone a, a previous test. test i never did yeah never did that try to do the test again and it'll show you if you <laughs> I'm not saying I am able to like even when I do my tests like I don't I don't want to do it again like you know because I know I won't get every single one right yeah I know it I know it and I actually did I did the AMC section things again twice I guess the second time I did it I actually got a lower score like <laughs> like by, by like one or two points and I was just like are you kidding me and it's it's just because like I didn't review I thought I didn't review it fully and I didn't like I didn't like make a log or an Inky deck or like a flashcard deck or a Quizlet deck or something or a document where I reviewed that stuff you know and in that moment it felt like I knew it yeah then like I had forgotten it and if you forget it by your test you didn't get anywhere you didn't get anywhere and I I did talk to a student once who had taken fifteen tests uh, and. I said, how did you review? They said, I didn't. They said, I didn't. 
And I said, oh my goodness, like, and they said, why am I not improving? And that was it, right? And, and I've sp spoken to students who have taken five or six tests and they improved two points per test because they spend that two or three days to review, go through videos, go open up their books again, look at all the explanations, look up their questions online, ask, get a study group together to explain questions to each other. And that's a great technique. Uh, one technique that I always, always recommend is it's like, can I explain this question to somebody? They, if they ask this question yeah. and I didn't have a solution, can I just explain what the question's asking? Can I explain why the other choices are wrong? And can I explain why the right answer is right? And can I explain why that person got it wrong? And in that case, that person is you. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and the same thing with the passages is like, can I, and then can I say, this is the info you need from the passage and you don't need the rest. This is the info from the passage that I needed to get this right. But if you can make your own solution key, and you know, I'm not saying you gotta write up like three pages per question, but if you can make it even in your head or like a few flashcards, five or six flashcards or half a page summary, um, you'll do well. And same thing with the topics. Uh, one of my best students, let me show you, let me try to pull it up. Uh, so let's, oh yeah, so he finished this off and then he started doing AMC materials. So he's at week 25, he's doing AMC and that just, he just, we put everything in all the way to week 29. So he had five weeks of AMC stuff. Oh wow, yeah. So, you know, it takes, but he had done so many questions before that. So he was quicker. If you're, if you're just doing AMC questions, you're going to get more wrong. So you got to do, you got to spread that out for six weeks or seven weeks. And then he actually still uses the schedule for his application cycle. So, <laughs> nice. yeah. Yeah. And then uh, another thing I like to do is uh, put up a study tracking sheet um, where you actually track the hours that you study. Uh, so, oh, yeah. um, so like you'll be very surprised. Uh, there's an app called uh, Forest. Um, there's other ones too that are free. I think Forest is two bucks uh, on the iPhone. Yeah, I've seen free. those. Yeah. Um, so that's like one that a lot of students like, and it's like two or three dollars, guys. Like, um, and they like it. So uh, it'll really sh emphasize how much time you're really spending. <laughs> is it eight hours or is it two? My biggest uh, advice is just to put your phone somewhere where you can't reach for it directly whenever you're studying or it, you can't hear it or have it vibrate next to you. I think putting it in your car, which is a little extreme. Uh, if it's not <laughs> really hot and cold. No, one girl, like that girl who had a, got a 500 to 517, that's what she did. She put it in her car. Like it wasn't even a question. She couldn't even think about grabbing it. So <laughs> um, wow. I, saw, I saw on YouTube once one guy, like it's an expensive measure, but he bought this like container that locks it in there like you, you, it lock, and there's nothing you can do you can't there's there's no way to break the container yeah, until the time expires yeah and if it yeah that's awesome <laughs> that's i mean did. if that's what gets you going then that's fine yeah that's what he did so anyway so um what i like to say is like you should be very introspective about your studying you know be very honest about yourself and if you don't have to write about it like it's like a diary right if you have feelings and you want to mm -hmm. write about your feelings you can get them out this is like your diary for your mcat it's like be honest with yourself of like what did i accomplish what did i not and you'll feel you will feel bad about yourself if you didn't accomplish your goals for that day and you have to write about that <laughs> or like tell your friend about that what should you do today i missed my goal right so yeah Establish a goal that you can meet. And if you find in a week that, hey, the schedule's not working for me, just readjust. Readjust the whole thing. Readjust your game plan. Readjust your end date. And don't be too frustrated. Um, on that note, um, don't register for your test the day you start studying. Register for your test a few weeks into your studying when you get the groove. Because okay. a lot of students, they're like, they want to study, but they, they're just not able to. They're not in the mental space. They don't ever start. And they just time Yeah, time. I signed up both times before I started before I started studying both times, I just signed up for a test. I was like, okay, and then I'm going to start studying next month. Like, <laughs> that's kind of how I did it. Yeah, yeah. I, I highly suggest that people they get in the groove of studying first. They take a diagnostic test, see where they are, make a schedule, follow it for a month. And, and if they're doing great with the schedule, maybe take another diagnostic test and then register, right? Nice. Um, and, and that way, you know you're making progress. Um, and some people say register right away, but like, it just, it's just too expensive to delay your test, um, and stuff like that. 
And if you're not making any progress, you never start studying, you might actually have to cancel your test. And it's just yeah. too expensive to do, do these things. So I, I just like to go with a safe recommendation. Um, and like, you know, writing down your goals, writing down what was not met, writing down your scores, it just gives you a log, you know? Like this guy, he can say, I got 14 out of 15, right? This yeah, dang, these logs are really good. Like I, I did not, I did not put any amount of work like into this. I think this, yeah. yeah. This yeah, is crazy. It, changes, it changes the game dude like how simple is this law but like the thing is like as a pre-med student unless you're watching this video on our channel it's like you're not gonna be able to think of doing this you won't like i never did it i literally never did it and um i just like thought of this idea one day and i said let's let's do it um uh, and what i actually noticed i'm not i'm not just making this up like the students who do really good they use this law yeah it's crazy it might be like a confounding variable or something. I'm not saying this log is like <laughs> high score, but like it just shows you that like, you know, there's some relevance to it. And some students find it a waste of time. I, I, I get that a lot, but like, how long do you think this takes to write down one, two, three, four, five? How long do you think that takes? I feel like it doesn't take too long and then it just keeps it in the back of your mind. And like, you got, you just gotta like, like be thinking about this material over and over like all the time constantly it has to yeah. take up a big portion of your brain and then you just have to like yeah it has to take a portion of your life to do well i i 100 agree like you have to like think about it yeah. and like you got to think about it when you're in the shower when you're driving like you gotta like think about these topics sometimes. exactly um, i like i like this log where it says wtf like just little thing like that really helps like that's how you're yeah. feeling like it's fine yeah, that's fine. Like, and uh, working as a scribe seemed to help with this chapter. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's uh, awesome. Yeah, exactly. and like, oh, bad day, you know, like, oh, you had a bad day. That's okay. And, <laughs> yeah. You know, or like, oh, I didn't finish this stuff. Um, found kind of having practice passages, and I like that. Yeah. That's perfect. Um, so, um, so I think like making a log, making yourself accountable, keeping yourself like, oh, this is all the stuff I never did. So if you have some extra time on break day, you just mm -hmm. hit it all up. You, you're not nice. guessing, you're not guessing which, which pages I didn't read. Yeah. And that's like another thing, like if you're falling behind, like I don't necessarily recommend finishing the previous days, just start fresh the next day mm -hmm. and catch up later, catch up later. Because like, if you let yourself fall behind, 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 it just, it's a bad mental state. If you start fresh every day, you're like you're energized you just want to meet that goal and if you have time you can catch up on a previous day mm -hmm. so that's that and then like at the end of the day you want to like try to like uh, sort of realize what are you going to do the next day so try to plan for the next day like this is my goal for the next day i'm going to get up and do this right and plan your day out and the schedule i guys showed you guys it's it doesn't go hour by hour and i i purposely we don't i don't do that like if you try to make an hour by hour schedule for 10 months that takes spend, way like, too much time. Like <laughs> it's gonna take ten months to make. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just, and guess what? You're not gonna know your hour by hour. Yeah, for the next that's month. not gonna You're happen. Not, it's not gonna happen. So it's it's just unlikely, and you don't know how long it's gonna take you to cover some of the stuff. Exactly. Some stuff might take you longer, or some stuff might take you less time. But you can absolutely like when the day comes, you can try to make a rough hour by hour schedule, like a rough one, but just for that day. Don't do it for like a hundred days, and. Uh, I know a lot of students, they, they like to make hour by hour schedules. They're like, I, I'm starting from the MCAT six to nine. That's not effective. That's just, no, you gotta have a goal. You gotta have a goal that you meet for that day. Yeah. Six to nine is arbitrary. It's so arbitrary. You gotta have a goal. A you can do two practice questions and three hours. Be like, all right, I studied three hours. Good yeah, job. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you gotta have a goal that's doable and then you push yourself towards, right? And if, if you just go by time, you're just gonna waste, you know, you, you'll be unproductive and you, you don't know where you are in your studying and how long it's gonna take. So yeah, that's that tracker. Um, uh, he has some other stuff on there. Then like a cars one, right? Like timing is a huge thing. Like Aaron struggles with timing. So um, this, this timing is early on in your practice. So you, you wanna do 10 minutes of practice passage at maximum. And some people, you know, for some of, like for Aaron, like, you know, he's struggling with cars. So. I'm not gonna tell him to do 10 minutes. I'm gonna say start 15 minutes for a passage. No, just not not 30, not 30. That's just a waste yeah. of time. So 15, we're gonna we're gonna work with 15. That's all the test is gonna be. But we're gonna try to get Aaron's accuracy up, you know, and his thinking process up. Um, 
And once he improves his accuracy, you know, hopefully, um, we can then slowly work the time down to 14, then 13, then 12, then 10. Um, so on the real MCAT, it's 90, 90 questions and uh, 90 questions, oh, sorry, nine passages in 90 minutes. Uh, so it's 10 minutes a passage. Uh, so, but some passages are have less questions with them. And yeah. some so, but if you just go with 10 minutes maximum per, that's whenever enough. those whenever those goth passages would show up, I would just skip on the next one. I'm like, nah, I don't <laughs> want to learn about gothic architecture right now. <laughs> yeah, that's another thing. It's like find the the types of questions and the <laughs> types of passages that give you trouble, and like in in cars and in other stuff too. Like, you know, there's just those types of things. Like in bio, maybe it's like an SDS page that gives you trouble, right? Like whenever they give you that graph. Or maybe it's like a genetics map that gives you trouble. Maybe it's like a formula. When I ask you to uh, apply a formula that gives you trouble. You know, maybe it's a chart, you know. Um, maybe it's, you know, maybe it's, it's a knockout graph that's giving you trouble. So figure out what gives you trouble and really analyze it. So um, try to do stuff timed as much as possible, um, yeah. you know, but... Um, if you're having a hard time with time, don't worry about time as much early on. Just just focus on getting the stuff right, you know, and just applying your brain. Because if you, what happens with time is people blame it on time. They're like, oh, I didn't get to it, or I felt rushed. But like, really, like, was that the issue, or was it like you didn't know it to begin with? So yeah, have something that can be worked the on. The biggest thing for me for cars, I. I, I never didn't have enough time. I think I was going too fast and not processing it. But then like to go back to a certain section and redo it all is just not, too much. it's not too feasible. Much. It's not feasible. So you gotta like really pace yourself. So the pacing for cars is read the passage in four minutes, uh, which is actually quite a bit of time. And every question is one minute. So that's, that's basically a simple uh, timing strategy. Four minutes to read and try to get the main idea, try to get like, if there's a contradictory statement that's being mentioned, um, you know, try to understand each paragraph, the purpose, why is he talking about this? How does he think about this? Um, what's the purpose of each paragraph? What's the author's stance? Um, and really get that big main idea down. Yeah. And because the thing is, you can't get the main idea by rereading the passage. You got to get it the first time. And then when it says go back to line five, you could just fill in the gaps. Whenever so, I started doing the, the Kaplan method for the cars, my score went down. And then when I just started doing my own thing again, it just went back up to 125 and stayed there. So I just yeah. decided not to use that because it was- Oh uh, yeah, 100% do not use some random method. Uh, actually yeah. just period. Do not use some random person's method. Use your own. Yeah, Make your just, own. So like, I don't like people are like, do you have a strategy? There's a lot of companies that have a strategy guide. Mm -hmm. And I, I just say, just use your own, <laughs> learn from your mistakes, figure out why you got it wrong and fix it, period. Um, and if you want to, if you're really struggling on improving, then you can experiment with someone else's guide. But don't think this is like the gold haven that's gonna yeah. make you succeed. It's just something for you to consider and make it your own, make it your own. My name is Raj. Um, I started at MCAT Bros as a second year med student. Um, and I just felt that there's a lot of advice out there and it just wasn't targeted to every type of student. Um, it just felt like it was targeted to people who started at 500 and those are the people talking and how to get a 515. But I found a lot of students are struggling to break 490, 480, 470. <laughs> you know, they're starting at 470, um, who had taken the test like four or five times and you know, they're looking for solutions. And I just felt like, you know, they go to a course, people would come to me, like, I went to a course, I got the score. I went to this tutor, and I got the score. And I was like, wondering why, you know, why? And, and I, I just figured, like, was it them? Or was it the course? What was it? I was just trying to figure out what was it. And I just realized, the biggest thing people were lacking at the lower score ranges was discipline and keeping themselves accountable. And so I sort of made something uh, that allows people to keep them as accountable as I can make them uh, for themselves. And what I realized is the people who hold themselves accountable, they almost always break 500, 505, 507. And you know, it literally is all about accountability and studying hard. And you, you, maybe you won't break a 520 doing that. You gotta really get the strategy down and everything. 
but you will definitely get into med school, a DO school or an MD school, and anyone can do it. Literally anybody you putting at any range. And I just wanted to give some like optimism, some different techniques, and actually just reduce people's cost. And that's what we're sort of about, and build a community so you're not as alone studying. Thank you.